your first ones, but now this one, you need to put that in your pocket. That's the first round you ever loaded. That would one year. That would go right there on your desk. You can take an ink pen and mark the bottom and say that's the first one I ever loaded. All right. All right. All right. I'm gonna get around here and you can take off running. Cool. Okay, buddy. All right. So now we uh, have our load blocks uh, brought back over. And what's the next step? What do we do now? Seat and crimp the bullet. He is good. Uh, so, all right, there's one thing we have to do, which you don't want to do, is just start seating and crimping because there's a chance that dimensionally uh, they're not going to chamber. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and take a one charged case. Let's take these bullets and let's get them up here where you're going to be comfortable. Uh, go ahead and take a charged case. I just dumped it out. Take a charge case. I just don't know. Uh, go ahead and take a charge case. I just dumped it out. Oh, don't worry about it. I know the guy that owns the channel. Okay, where'd you put it? Right there? Yeah. I don't know, it's like yeah, yeah. OCD or something. I had to look for the primer and I yeah. just dumped the powder. That's okay. Okay. Uh. All right, so this is our Reading model number two um, powder and bullet scale. To the right of our pendulum here. Our hole number one, two, three, four, and five. Those are ex those are hole numbers expressed in grains. So we have one grain, two grain, three grain, four grain, five grains. Anything over five, we come to the left. How much does each mark represent? If you count all those little lines up to 500, we have 100. Divide 100 into 500, we get five. So each one of these increments is equivalent to five grains. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Once we're maxed out at five, we come over to here, we go five, 10, 15, 20, 25, all the way to 500. Our tenths are expressed in, think of dimes. Starting at zero, a dime would just be literally one notch. Okay? okay. So we're going to throw 3.1 grains of our tight group. So there's our three, one, two, three, whole number, three, and th So the first thing we want to do, we want to make sure that this is calibrated to zero. To do that, each poise is set to zero, and that needle is to zero. If that needle is not to zero, or the pointer, then you're going to adjust this foot, but we're, we're, we're perfect. Okay. So I want you to set that for 3.1 grains. And now, for the, so the viewer knows, uh, we've already talked about the load data. Uh, our book is calling for a min charge of 3 grains and a max charge of 3.3. I don't start at 3.0 grains on a fast burning powder, or I don't start at a min charge because if you throw a squib much lower than that, you can easily get a bullet stuck in the bore. Easily. So we're going to go, we're going to start at 3.1. So go ahead and... Um, Set that for 3.1. So right there? Okay, yes. Now, take your magnifying glass and double check that. I see my reflection. There you are. Just so it's in yeah, the notch. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. You want to take a look? And yeah, let me double check that. Yep, that looks good. Now, okay. now, this is what we have to do. When we seeded to the 1.175 overall cartridge length, we double checked the book and the calipers. So right now, 
look at your load man. You know, what's your min charge? 3.0. What's our max charge? 3.3. Now what do we want? 3.1. So now you've double checked that, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So let's go ahead and let's uh, let's get our powder measure filled. All right, Willie, go ahead and pull your cap off. Pull the cap off the canister. Now, you're only going to have one can of uh, powder out at once of one type, right? Now, this is a new canister, so peel that off as uh, gently as you can without ripping it. And place that into the lid because you want to save that because when we put the lid on that's going to help seal that airtight. Okay. Now, I take my hand like this, use it as a funnel, and pour that in and, and pour at least to 80%. I don't think you would make a good CEO because you like to do things like destroy things when you shoot it with your gun. Well, who doesn't? Like, like lawn mowers and engine blocks and and the viewers can't be exposed to this kind of stuff. So I don't think they mind. Oh, okay. Then you would do good. Now, put your lid on your powder. That's the first thing so nothing gets um, dropped into that. You can just push that down in the lid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, if that gets torn, then you throw it away because you don't want a piece of that to fall in the powder and get poured into there down the road. But that keeps that air tight, and you want to keep oxygen away from that. Okay. And that's perfect. I always set it right there so I know that's matched to that. Now, we'll leave that off for now. So now, um, what we're going to do is, you see the powder? We want to uniform this from the top of the powder hopper into the body of the measure. Just like pepper in a pepper shaker. When you fill the pepper shaker, when you tap it on the table, what happens? It flattens out. It flattens out, settles out. So start tapping this. Put one hand over that and tap it. More? Flatten your hand. Flatten, flatten, your, flatten your tap hand. There you go. There you go. Burp it like a baby. So now it's pretty much stopped so we know we're settled. So grab your... Grab your Right there. Yeah. The dish. Your dish. Well, this is what you're going to do. You're going to uniform your powder measure. Okay. You do that three times and you want, you want your clicks to all be the same. Okay. I'm going to show you how to do this like a pro. <laughs> okay. Put that, put that under there. Watch. Don't hold it. Okay. 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 So now dump that back into the powder hopper. Throw one charge. And you're going to place it onto the pan hanger of the scale. Now put it back into here. I'm going to show you something. Get your, get your pan higher to the mouth. It's a little higher so you don't have spillover. Okay. So you have a little spillover, so this is what I do. Especially on a minimal charge. You can you can touch the pan. And if it's a if it's a heavier charge like on a rifle or magnum rifle, once the powder starts flowing, I will drop the pan and let it fill and catch it. Okay? So just like that. So you try that. And this is a technique. You want to really practice getting good at this. You don't even want a, a granule to spill onto the bench. Okay, throw that onto the pan hanger. So we're, we're a little heavy by about three quarters of a, a grain. So we're going to, okay, on the breading powder measure, you got to loosen this, okay? Okay. And all we're going to do let's just drop it about that much. So now dump that back into the hopper. Now with no powder in this, this is what I want you to do. I want you to hold it like this, throw the charge, and then come up like this so you can set it on the pan with the handle. So put that in your left hand, your left hand like this. Okay. Yeah. 
you can use your index finger if you want. But okay. Okay, we're getting close. So I want you to loosen this, and let's just go about four of those incremental notches. do run two or three and we didn't do that on the last one but that's okay there's the boss is home and you can see that is a minimal charge okay now sometimes this this scale is so sensitive it sticks yeah okay and look at that now, we are uh, pretty much right there. So you want three in a row now. You want to make a verification three in a row. And do you see that movement? That's mm -hmm. air draft. Okay. If you watch it, all of a sudden it's settled down. You always got to be aware of that with a fan or open doors. We got the garage open. Okay. We have the garage open, otherwise the viewers could not see what we're doing. And it's just the lighting kills it. So what we're going to do, pull the pan off and throw two more. You want two in a row, and let's move this uh, trickler out of the way. You want, to, you want three in a row, so two more. With that swing in, does that? Doesn't matter. Okay. It'll, it'll settle out. You're just right there. Yeah. I, I wouldn't, for, for what you're doing, just going out bing bang, steel targets, th this is just fine. Okay, I want you to get in the habit of having that touch that. Because that can be a difference. How you doing? You're okay. Miss Highboy's home. She's been out shopping. You give me a gun? No, I got my haircut. Oh, and you look gorgeous. Yes, I like it actually. So what do you think of that? That one's dead on. Yeah, do another one. There you go. Okay. So now this is what we're going to do. You're going to take your cases and you're going to turn them over, mouth side up. Okay. You do that load block, I'll do this one. So now we're ready to charge our cases and this is uh, super important. Watch my fingers, I'm not grabbing it like this. Now, I want the viewers and Willie to watch this. Willie, let's just say he's taking over. Where'd I stop? See? At the end? No. <laughs> <laughs> See? So you're like, oh, okay. He, he started at the end, so you start here and you miss three. Or, oh, I got to start here, and you have a couple double charges. Okay? So the first thing you want to do is you never try to stop in the middle of a row and you try not to stop in the middle of a block and you go methodically it, and every time if you do or don't stop you're always prepared to look with the flashlight so I need I know that I need to start on that case and when we're done we're gonna take the flashlight and we're gonna verify that we got um, the correct charge. Now, okay, instead of coming all the way back, you could easily double charge one. So we can come over here like this. Now, notice my cadence. I'm not like this one time. And then like that the next time. That's, that's incorrect. 
my cadence is always the same. I want to make sure, make sure I start in the right case. That click click, that's the pepper shaker. It keeps the powder settled. The powder has a bulk density. The higher the bulk density, the less deviation. Uh, this powder isn't going to have as high as a bulk density as some powders. So if I have a different cadence from hit to hit, it's going to settle differently and it's going to meter into this rotor differently. Now, watch this. I'm turning the load block. I'm on my fourth row in. So you want to really keep track of that. Now, this is what we call batch loading. And we're loading in a, a load block. What this enables us to do is we can take the flashlight when we're done and verify proper charge for each case. That's the uh, what you don't really get with a, a progressive loader. The nice thing about a turret, it's faster than a single stage, but yet it it's not as fast as a progressive, but it does give us the opportunity to uh, check the charges in the case. Now, how I'm going to do this is I'm going to check my load block, and then I'm going to have Willie check it. But after Willie does his and checks his, I'm going to check his load block, because anything that comes off my equipment, um, I, I really want to make sure that I'm setting him up as safe as I can. ask the viewers a question in a second and we'll see if Willie has the right answer. If he's going to be the CEO, he's got to have the right answer. You're pop quizzing me? Yeah, okay. Did I do this? Or did I do this? You checked every single one? Yeah, that's right. So now what we're going to do um, the viewers won't see this, but I want really to see what a true double charge looks like. And it's an optical illusion. Okay, Willie, you check those over. Slower the burning powder, the more the more lo uh, load density. Okay, bulk density has to do with the powder. Load density, the higher the load density, the more room in the case the powder takes up. The slower the burning powder, the higher your case fills. We can work with your loads on this using different powders to where if you double charge it, it would overflow. The problem with a fast burning powder like this, if you double charge it, it won't tell you. So now, um, I'm going to tell this to Willie and the viewers. When Willie always does a good job identifying the primer, when he always um, does a good job of cartridge overall length, proper bullet seat depth, he always makes sure he has the correct powder, he double checks the charge on the scale and, and he compares that back to the recipe and he does this, he will never ever have a, a problem with um, grenading a handgun in his hand. 
He won't have a squib of bullet stuck in the barrel. He won't have a double charge, and this is how you do it. So now I'm going to have Willie uh, step aside. I'm going to move in here. Um, even though I know which one of these I double charged, <laughs> let me tell you. I'm going to take the time to <laughs> double check it. All right, that looks really good. So now, will you? I'm, now I'm going to move this. I don't want to drop it. You can come around here and you can begin uh, metering the charge and charging the cases. Right now, it's metered. The rotor is full. When you hit that handle, we charge it. It's meter charge, meter charge. So we'll go right ahead. You're a nice powder measure, huh? Yeah. This is the 10X pistol. They're up to 25 grains. Nice thing, being a, what shines about it is when you're running a min charge like this, you can get away with minimal charges like this and it throws it very consistent. Okay, now flip your load tray around. Yeah, good job. Good. I was going to tell you to do that, and you nailed it. I'm just going to look anyway. Absolutely. Absolutely. You did good. There's no sense in giving it half my effort. That's right, buddy. Now you understand why I don't shoot other people's ammunition. <laughs> yeah. You know, you get someone and and they're watching TV and they're texting and shooting pictures back and forth and 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 they're uh, maybe having a beer and next thing you know they got they got six of those with charges because they double charge an entire row and then they want to go out and show their buddy how 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 nice their rounds are and uh, and his buddy ends up losing his hand. That usually takes the fun out of shooting. Yeah, it usually does. Unless unless it's your buddy that loads it and he gets it, then you're gonna be like, Well, all right. <laughs> that was a good tutorial. <laughs> Note to self. Don't shoot with Bill and don't shoot Bill's reloads. Well if you're gonna blow your hand off, at least do it on YouTube. That's right, get clicked for it.
Have a look. So, what we didn't do is we didn't uh, take a break during uh, charging the cases. We did the whole job. So now, let's set that load block next to that one. And what we have to do is before we move on, we're going to put our powder back in the jug. And why is that? We don't want oxygen in our powder. It will affect your burn rate. So we'll open that up. Once you come onto this side, so you are on your side, so you can pour easily. Now, um, what you're going to do is you're going to loosen this powder measure. Hold here, and oh, you know I didn't have that very tight, did I? Um, that's okay. Um, how I usually when I tighten these, I, I use the body of the powder measure like that. So when you loosen it, just hold that and turn the body of it. And now what you're going to do, using your hand as a funnel, you're going to pour that back into that jug. This whole thing just comes up? Mm-hmm. Okay. There you go. This, those, these are my, my favorite powder measures, my Redding. They're just, they are the best. Be best powder measure on the market, without a doubt. Now kind of rotate that so it'll work around that baffle. There's still just a couple okay. speckles of it in there. So now we're going to do this. See that bracket to your right there on the shelf? Right here? Yep. Put it in there. And now hold your canister under there and uh, cycle it. No, with the handle. Click, 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 click. Yeah. Oh, look. You, you did that so the viewers could see. Oh, I didn't want to hit the show if I didn't know. Oh, it oh I got you. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to make a good CEO. I guess you won't. Well, that, 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 <laughs> that, that, there you go. Good enough? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So now, um, one last uh, comment. Um, what do you think the the number one reason is for clearing that powder measure like that? Uh, probably so it's clean for the next batch of whatever powder you. Because put in. if you leave any in there and you uh, you you set that up for a maximum charge of let's say 20 grains or something, and you put a uh, another powder into there and you throw in 20 grains of this type group you just now double charge the case all right well we, we got our load blocks brought over and I don't even know how to reload so so you don't know what the next step is or do you we would have to resize our cases no we got a seat and crimp the bullet Okay, I'm so glad I have you here. All right, so let's go. Uh, first thing we're gonna do, uh, let's bring our box of bullets up so uh, we have, uh, so it's comfortable when you're grabbing them. Now, what we're not gonna do is we're not going to uh, seat and crimp all these right through because we want to take the first one, complete it as our complete cartridge and make sure we have chamber fit. So uh, make sure you're on the seat die. Take your bullet, go ahead and seat it. Now, when you seize your bullet, we have this case mouth expanded so the viewers can see where that bullet will rest into there like that. You want that bullet uh, as, as, uh, as concentric or straight to the case as you can get it, okay? And now, we're going to seat it and you're going to crimp it. Okay, now 
temperatures. On point, 1.174. Two thousandths difference than what my dummy round was. 1.173? Yeah. And that's why when we're shooting for 1.175, on my dummy, if I'm high or low by a thousandths, I don't care because we're going to have a deviation in cartridge overall length anyway. So that won't really matter. So now what we're going to do, we're going to take that revolver, be careful not to you know, bang it on the press, and let's uh, make sure that we have uh, a proper cartridge fit. It fits. And it was mine. All right. Okay, so we're good to go. Go ahead and inject them up out of there. There we go. So now you can put your mom's revolver down. That's yours. She has a very, very nice revolver. Fact. All right, so we're ready to go. So now what Willie's going to do, he's going to sit here and he is going to seat and crimp and you'll be done. You need to be your first ones, but now this one, you need to put that in your pocket. That's the first round you ever loaded. That would, one your, that would go right there on your desk. You can take an ink pen and mark the bottom and say that's the first one I ever loaded. All right. All right. All right. I'm going to get around here and you can take off running. Oh, okay, buddy. Position that turret knob. Yeah, it was over here. There you go. Put it over here. If you want, you can remove the priming tube. Okay, put the shell into the shell holder and then the bolt on. That's how you always do it. Yeah, I was doing that so the viewers could could have a good look. Yeah, you you can remove that. There's another thing for just doing. Um, Working up loads, I just put the primers into the primer cup by hand. Here, I'll take those. So in other words, you don't fill the tube. You would, uh, so sometimes here, I'll come around and show you. No. Go ahead and finish that. Sometimes if I'm only uh, running a few, I'll have my primers there and I'll just put them into the cup. Oh, okay. You know, if, if you're doing uh, more than a dozen, then I, I fill the tube. Okay, one thing, uh, can I put your case in the shell holder? Put your, put your bullet in there. Get it soft seated, that's soft seating. Get a little more concentric. Yeah. Don't baby it. There you go. There you go. That's perfect. These are um, nice bullets for shooting rabbits because they, it's such a big hole, they just bleed out, they just fall over dead. take your hand off the turret knob, go back to, yeah, always start fresh up on the next uh, position. <laughs> I can't believe I dumped that one. Oh, I've done it. Don't worry about it. 
If you've done it, I've done it ten times, so don't worry about it. Because ooh, that's just our human side. That's why I don't uh, load in the house where I have carpet. Not, not that I wouldn't. I, 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 if I had an extra room, I wouldn't. But I would rather have like a rubber mat down where if your powder falls. Because you don't want to put gunpowder in a vacuum. Static. Oh. Think about it. <laughs> you, you're, you're sucking powder up into the vacuum, right? Mm -hmm. Over time it builds up and all of a sudden you vacuum up a live primer and what makes a primer detonate? Impact. <laughs> what does it ignite? And powder doesn't need oxygen. Oh. <laughs> That's why you can, a compressed load is, you fill the case all the way up and press the bullet into it and there's no air. But it still goes bang. It creates its own gases. So if you got um, powder in a vacuum, you're out of your, your You'd blow your vacuum up. Well, if you're wanting to buy a new one, that, that'd be a good excuse. That'd be a great excuse. We have a lot of time to think about what kind of vacuum you want when they're, you know, yeah. putting the bird dressing on you. Yeah, and then we'll have to load you up some 357 map and some stout ones that you can you can have in the backcountry. Okay. Something that's going to put some serious um, muzzle energy. Muzzle energy. That is like I love muzzle energy. Okay. Are you ready for a lesson on muzzle energy? Sure. Okay. Muzzle energy. Um, let's say we take a two forty three diameter bullet. This is great for long range. You can take a Nice muley, nice antelope, nice white tail with it. And you can take a 500 yard kill easy. Easy. Okay. And now I have a 45 caliber rifle, like a 4570 government. It's a big, big bullet. Okay. okay. Almost twice the diameter of the 243. At 600 yards, you're going to have to race the sights of that rifle so high, the ballistics of that 243 are going to be so much better, okay? But which one would you rather have if a bear is charging you at 10 yards? The bigger one. The bigger. It's got so much energy coming off that muzzle that you want penetration and you want to destroy tissue. Um, a bear can run dead because when they hibernate, very few beats per minute, so you can blow their heart out and they can still operate. So you have to break them down. That's, that, that you want, that's your goal, not that you're not gonna drop a bear and kill him, but optimum, you wanna break something. That's, that's the goal. Well, the more muzzle energy you have, um, the more you're going to do that. So your 357 Magnum, you're wanting it for you know, the backwoods of bear up close. You don't care about 100 yards. He is right there, and he's doing business with you. Mm -hmm. And so that's what you want. And the well, bear spray didn't work, so I got to use my gun. Yeah, and I would never go for the bear spray if you got the gun. Just go for the gun, because because on a bear you would be lucky to get two shots off anyway. You're probably only going to get one. 30 yards, they're going to come 30 yards so quick. 
that if 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 you grab the bear spray, you'll never get a chance to use the gun. It's that fast. And if there's wind, you're going to get yourself too. Oh yeah. Yeah. That would be fun. Yeah. And so for me, I just give them what I got in my hand. Bang. And the higher the muzzle energy with the heavier the bullet, the better off you are. Uh, muzzle energy is um, velocity squared times your bullet weight divided by 450,420. 450420. That's muzzle energy. I don't want you to forget that. <laughs> I already forgot. <laughs> okay. Velocity times velocity times bullet weight divided by 450420. Where does that 450420 come from? Um, a guy with a lot more brains than me. Oh, okay. Just know muzzle energy can be your friend. Just remember that. Okay. The more muzzle energy, the bigger the friend. But you know, your your three fifty seven Magnum, you can take a a a, a, a medium sized black bear with a bullet that's as light as one hundred twenty five grains. You can do it. It's the right shot placement. Bust a spinal cord. One hundred fifty eight grain cast bullet. Put that pumped up. Remember velocity squared. So the higher your velocity, right, the more muzzle energy. So the, because velocity squared times bullet weight, the more bullet weight, the more muzzle velocity, the more muzzle energy. Yeah. You're soaking all this up right now. <laughs> You're like, yeah. Just remember. I'm halfway listening to you so I don't screw this up. Yeah. That's <laughs> okay. Just know this, Willie. Bigger is better. That's easy to remember. Bears live their life off that standard to go on, yeah. That's why they live for someone with a snub nose. <laughs> they don't want one with the full mag, four inch. That'll kill them. Technically, a three inches and a snub nose, two inch. What's what's uh? What are the lengths on your barrels? Uh, mine's a four inch and hers is a two inch. Yeah, she's got this snubby. That's a that's a belly gun. A belly gun. Yeah. And someone is li literally uh, uh on you. Yeah, that's a belly gun. Oh, I just checking that. It looked like, like it, it was, was moving. No, it looked like it was riding high, but it's not. Yeah. Okay. Um, if this is a 357 Magnum, why is it called a 38 caliber? Think about it. Wouldn't a, a 38 caliber be 0 .380? Look at the diameter of that bullet on the box. Because your box, what's the diameter of the bullet? 38. No, that's the caliber. 38 caliber, 358. Oh, why isn't that 0.380? Why? I don't know. Everything in life is perspective on when you were walking in this world and where you were at. Back in the day, muzzle loader, and they're running the ball down the board, it was a point. 380 diameter bore. But when they went to the metallic cartridge, it remained 0 0.380 in the chamber. That case thickness reduced that. Hmm. If you didn't have the case, it was dipping 0 0.380. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. If you had a 38.380 diameter hole and you put that case into there, 
now that hole's even smaller for the bullet. So they reduced the bore and the bullet to match the, the caliber of the case. Hmm. That's why. You know, you know. So why is it that the 357 and the 38 are, uh, how can you shoot a, a 38 out of a 357? You have a size 10 foot and your child has a size 6. You can't put your size 10 foot in their size 6 shoe. But they can put their shoe on and they can put your shoe on. The 38 special is a point, is a 1.155 length cartridge case. You got me? I mean, the difference between a, and I, I really, I really should go to my data. The difference in length is 0.135 or 135,000. So the 38 special, it's a 38 caliber, it's just shorter. So it will fit in the chamber lengthwise, but the 357 Magnum, it won't fit. Okay. I was just curious why if they have the same diameter, why are they, why is one a 357 and one of them is a 38? Because they had the 38 special. They wanted more power with the same caliber, so they lengthened the case and lengthened the chamber so they could put more powder for more oomph. Specials, the most popular cartridge ram. Thirty eight special introduced in nineteen oh two. Right. Three fifty seven was introduced in nineteen thirty five. So the thirty eight special it offers certain ballistics. But you take a man in a more layers, leather jacket, maybe a vest under that, and that police officer had a problem. A 38 special wouldn't go through that. Um, maybe you've got someone in a car and the police officer is shooting at them. And remember what doors were like back, you know, in those days? We couldn't penetrate the door. They said, look, we need. We need uh, more muzzle energy, right? And muzzle energy back then really wasn't looked at like we have today. They just knew they needed more. Mm -hmm. They needed more horsepower. So by lengthening the cartridge by 135 thousandths, then um, what that did is it enabled to use more powder and different powders with different burn rates to develop different peak pressures for different velocities and which was more muzzle energy. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I can take a, a Ford 360 motor and if I put a longer stroke, I have a 390 mm -hmm. more horsepower. So we just got a, a longer stroke in a chamber. It gives us more power. That makes sense to me because you're increasing the displacement by lengthening the stroke. I yeah, just... it's, it's, it's a stronger round. 
then your 41 would go from here. Okay. So go for it, just go right into that next load block. Okay. How are they looking? I, I think they're okay. I think it looks great. I'm, I'm sitting here watching, so. I don't even know how to reload. Yeah, I got I got some of my um, some viewers. You know, they caught on to me. You know, come out of the channel. You don't even know how to reload, and I'm like, dang, how they know? Here's one for you. Did you know? I have my own internet store. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't know it either, but one of my viewers figured it out. What he figured out is I demo all these products. When people go online, when people go online to order them, sometimes they accidentally find my website in order for me, and I'm making money. Mm -hmm. The problem is I don't know where my website's at. Hmm. So, and I don't know where I count my money's in. Well, if you find out, I want you to tell me what's wrong. I don't know, I'm just... Yeah, it's a lead ring. It's all right. It's, it's just, you, you can get a little lead shaving. to be a little, little lead ring. You're all right. I think the, this went really awesome today. Yeah. And you're ready to go out and you're gonna like these on paper. Oh, you you can talk. This won't end up putting this out. Your hair looks you, great. You're done. No, we're still filming, but oh. Oh, I'm just gonna cut this part out. Your hair oh, looks okay. great. Thank Throw you. hair in a spoon. See? In your Do you like it better? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's, I like it. There's no spoon in your hand. <laughs> There's what? Could be, there could be. There was one time when I was younger, she had gone and got in a perm, and I was probably being naughty, so I was oh. in trouble. What? You were sitting at the table, you were supposed to finish your food, and you had to go to the bathroom, and you had been there a while. So you jumped up, ran to the bathroom, you came out of the bathroom, and your dad was standing out there in the entryway, and... He said, and you looked at him and you said, have you seen mom? Because you were afraid because you were up from the table. And he said, I don't know what she looked like. And you said, curly hair and a spoon in her hand. Because I used to whip him with the wooden spoon. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Look at him, he's trucking. He's got all those loaded. Wow. Like, it went real, I think it went smooth, don't you? Yeah. Did I do a good job of explaining? You did. And now, was he a good student? Oh yeah, and now I can upload this. I dumped some powder on one of them. <laughs> he got it like this, and he turns it over like in the primer. And goes, I go, that's okay, we'll cut that out. <laughs> we had to try that, what, like four or five times? Yeah, we had to but do But you should keep some of that in there, because that's part of the training and the learning. No, no. Okay. So, um, do you guys want, I, you probably can't have any, but <clears throat> do you want orange juice, Willie, or a soda? I have a Pepsi right here. Okay. Um, What's for lunch? I could make some lunch. I was thinking um, tuna fish sandwiches or grilled cheese or soup or... You want to do a burger from Carl Jr.? <laughs> Is that what you want? What do you want, Willie? I should probably get a hold of Nikki and see if she wants me to bring her food because she's... She's homesick. Oh. Well, her, she like... She hurt her sternum when... She was sitting in traffic and the car in front of her was like smoking real bad and it made her cough and she coughed hard enough that it hurt her sternum uh -huh. and she's like really sore and she's moving real slow and stuff. Wow. So, yeah, I should probably 
I'll see if she wants me to bring some food home. She probably does. Next time he comes over, I'm going to have him load on the deal one. To see a difference? Yeah. What did he load on today? The ready. Okay. It's nice though, isn't it? I like it. Yeah. I, I'm glad you had me do this instead of the uh, single, single stage. stage oh. cause I'm, I mean, I know it, it, I'm sure it does its job, but it just, I'm sure it's a lot more torture, it's slow paced. And yeah. 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 And it progresses fast. It's fast. And was Kitty well behaved? Yes. Yeah. It was very good. Um, Ruger was in here when I left. He must have snuck out the front when you had the door open. I bet he's out there. No, I put him up back. Oh. He's out back. Okay. Yeah. I don't oh, know where so puppy's at. He's out back. Oh, yeah, because we opened the garage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was I going to say? Oh, yeah, I don't necessarily need anything that's fast. I mean, this is, I won't be in a hurry when I'm reloading. You know, you know and, and, and what you can do is, you can get like, these load blocks are eight bucks a piece. Mm -hmm. So you can get like, every two of them is a hundred. So if you had four of them, one night you go out and you decap, prime, and expand. All of them. Then the next night you charge the powder and do this. Yeah. Then that's 300 rounds in two nights. That's, that's why I say that's about 150 rounds an hour because you'll be there about an hour each night. Just an hour. You know? Yeah. So what? What, what is the cost of, uh, you know, bullets? I'm already going to have the casings from after I shoot, but, so I guess bullets, powder, is it pretty cheap? Um, I don't, I don't ever figure up what it costs because I don't load to save, I just load to shoot. I just, I just want to load. Um, but let's go to midway. Something I just realized today is that when, uh, you know, you buy bullets that are 130 grain or 158 grain. That's the weight of the bullet itself. Yeah. When I was thinking that had something to do with how much powder was in it. Oh, no. Um, uh, 4570 government wood. That's a 45 caliber bullet, 70 grains of powder. And we put three grains in these? Yeah. What's the abbreviations on those bullets there? Uh, so log cutters, WC, DBB, SGG. Okay, say that again. WC, DBB. BBB? DBB. Oh, that's right. Double base, uh, then single crease group. Yeah, SGG.
um, place called Meister, M-E-I-S-T-E-R. They're 11 cents a piece, and that's about what these are coming out to be. Okay, 14 cents with bullet primer. Let me, let me look at the powder up here. You'll get about 2,200 out of that. 2,260 rounds. Wow. Yeah, and so um, $19.99. So he's talking pennies. Oh, yeah. Uh, so he's talking 15 cents around. And see all my lead that I have under here uh, down the road, I want to get into casting. That's when that will be really cheap. A lot of my casting equipment, I cast my own. Oh. If you see wheel weights, you get them. You get them like you, they got, they're going to be lead, not the newer uh, type that aren't lead. Know someone that's got wheel weights? They all will take them, absolutely. And if you're if you go to a gun show and you see someone selling lead cheap, you know, score it up. But you got to know what you're looking at because if you don't know what price is on lead, you know. But you, you when I get ready, I'm going to be visiting the recycle yard probably on a monthly basis to go through the lead pile. So what about like? When we go out shooting and there's little pieces of lead sitting by our targets, you want those too? You know what? You can actually do that. Yeah. Because any impurities will come to the uh, surface of that uh, casting pot. And you skim it off and you're left with the lead. Okay. Yeah. 
But, you know, that's probably a couple years down the road at least for me. Fifteen cents a round is really, you know, some people say everything's went up and so is wages. Yeah, back when it was three cents a round, well, well, look what people were making an hour. You know, when I first started working, minimum wage was five fifteen. Yeah. When I started working, minimum wage was three cents. Really? No, I'm oh. <laughs> I didn't think you were that old. <laughs> I don't know, it was like, I don't know what minimum wage was. Yeah. Um, what's the, let me see that. What, what's the one behind it? one again but rotate it as you measure. People should be treated a certain way, you know. I mean, everyone deserves some respect, but some people just cry and um, cry until they get ridiculous things. See. Yeah. yeah. You did very good. You did very good. And so, so now I want to tell the viewers that um, this morning Willie came over at nine o'clock, and we had. We had breakfast and we didn't rehearse this. Uh, just got everything. I got everything set up before we came, and we came out here. And we busted it out. So, what what do you think overall? Um, I like it. I mean, I I definitely want to do more. I want to go shoot these and see how they do. Yeah, absolutely. So now I want to tell the rollers. I'm Willie and I were talking about the cost of this, and kind of like uh, just sitting here pulling my calculator out and just talking. You know, I, I narrowed it down to like 15 cents a case. But I don't ever reload because I save money. What we just did for Willie, you cannot get these off the shelf. If you can, you can't do it anywhere. These are target loads, low recoil for um, uh, his girlfriend and him. They can enjoy them and so we can tailor the loads to what we want, kind of like for your 357 Magnum. We, we can load some bad boys up with uh, some nice uh, uh, muzzle energy to, to, so he's equipped to protect himself. So we're loading, it really gives us the edge to match the, the load to the handgun. So uh, you your, your first time. So there we go. So guys and gals, that's the end of this video. God bless. We'll see you on the next.